program called factorial.s which is used for calculating the factorial of an integer right this is an assembly program and there are a few little nuances here this is um, you know as you know factorial uh, we calculate it using recursive functions right so th this is how this program works uh, you don't necessarily have to use recursion but this is how this program works so this is a nice demonstration of how recursion and you know multi level functions uh, work in in assembly right so let us first look at look at how uh, how it works so we'll load it up in qdisfim and we'll run it so it brings up a prompt and then we enter a number and you get the answer right so this is pretty simple so you know that it has to ask for a prompt ask for an integer using syscalls and then do something how cal calculate the factorial somehow and then it prints out the prompt right let us inspect how the code actually works so if we jump into the main function you will see that this part is pretty simple uh, very uh, you know standard syscalls uh, this is called prints out the prompt this is called takes is the the input integer uh, for which calculate the factorial now um, and then it it calculates the factorial using the fact function right and then we jump into the function using the jump and link instruction right so basically the jump and link, link instruction what it'll, what will do as you already know right so it will move into the function and store this address uh, into dollar ra basically right uh, that is what the linking part means so it jumps and then links and so now one interesting fact is that this function has the abi uh, which is the um, uh, you can think of it as the agreed upon contract um, that the parameter will be placed in the dollar a0 register and that is why we uh, move the the answer of the integer syscall integer input syscall into dollar a0 and it also um, it, it is also there that the uh, right so that, that is how it works and now let us see how it actually works right so we move into the function now here you will see that um, you know we are, we are doing some weird stuff here why, why are we doing this we we didn't need to do this you know in standard functions um, which have done before right so we do this because as you know these are multi-level functions uh, by multi-level i mean that the depth uh, of the call stack is more than one right so the function calls go more than one level deep right and when you go whenever you go function calls more than one level deep the previous levels the return address of the previous levels have to be stored somewhere right because otherwise the the dollar ra is of course erased every time you do a jump and link uh, to go one level deeper right so you need to store them somewhere so you need to know where to return right once you're done so that's that's what we're doing here so this is a pretty standard way of of storing things on the stack on uh, in mips we basically first move the stack pointer right uh, you need to remember that uh, the stack grows uh, in the direction of uh, decreasing memory addresses right and therefore we move it downwards by 8 bytes which is basically you know two 32 bit registers and then we store two 32 bit values one is the return address and then the parameter the return address as we discussed we need to store because you know the it is a recursive function more than one level deep the parameter we also need to store because we'll be doing some stuff to it we'll be modifying it right and the uh, the dollar uh, the, the uh, you can typically think of them as you know caller say so the caller is going to be saving them because um, we will want to you know move into uh, we'll be calling this function inside it so that again becomes a callee of the scholar but you, you know what i mean now we we basically check for the base case using the set less than instruction right so it sets t0 to 1 if a0 is less than 1 which, which means if the argument is less than 1 right 
uh, basically we are checking whether you know the argument is zero or not right and if it is less than one then it sets this to one and if if dollar t zero is set to one then this will not be satisfied then then you know t zero will not be equal to zero and and therefore it will you know not branch so this is the base case if we, if it is less than one then this branching does not happen and this is the base case so it just returns one right now to remember that uh, the, the 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 things to note is that whenever you save something in a stack whenever just as you just enter into the function you also need to pop these off the stack and move the stack pointer to the location before you modified it just before returning right so we do that we pop the two values we pop the two values using this we basically reset the stack pointer right um now moving the stack pointers is enough you don't need to zero out the uh these values or, or anything just moving the stack pointer is enough and we will be returning one right so we store one in dollar v1 it is the agreed, agreed upon contract that the fact function will store its return value in the dollar v1 it's the convention that this function is going to be following right and then it returns the caller if but this only happens if base case is there if it is not base case then it jumps to here right because if it is not base case then this is set to zero and if it is zero then you know the branching happens and it jumps to this l1 and once it jumps to l1 this is where the recursion happens right so you basically store uh, a, uh you know the argument minus one into dollar a zero and basically call the function with the argument minus one as the next argument basically and then you know that the return value has been stored in dollar v1 because that is the contract that is the convention you know you always need to keep in mind that while writing recursive functions just writing any functions for the matter um, in assembly especially you just need to remember and maybe write it down in a comment somewhere that these registers are where the input parameters go this these registers are where the output is going to be stored right and then it will just help you uh, in writing functions especially recursive functions and then you call this function recursively right and then you know that it has done whatever it is it has needed to do and stored the answer for a minus one in uh, in dollar v1 and of course then we will uh, multiply that right uh, with uh, with our n or uh, with our argument and store it in v1 right and uh, just before doing that we also of course restore the stack pointer right so you may ask why are we storing it here why when you know why are we restoring it two times so one thing to note here is that either for a single uh, function execution either this branch is taken or this branch is taken right so we need to ensure that that the stack resetting happens regardless of which branch is taken it has to happen before the function exits regardless of whether it exits using this or this so we do it in here right and of course we also restore the return the uh, the return address right because we know that when we jumped into this function this function would have messed with dollar a ra you know because it's a jump and link instruction so it would have messed with dollar ra and we need to restore it to what it actually should be right and therefore we do it in here using load work loading it from you know the wherever we saved it so you see this is pretty symmetrical add i add i and then save word dollar ra load word dollar ra right save word dollar a0 load word dollar a0 right it is very symmetrical and very easy to remember very easy to write basically if you follow these set of conventions and then we return it right and then you know you know the the magic has happened and you get the value in dollar v1 which is then subsequently printed uh, in this part right in the princess call 